Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for grade five, Eureka Math, module four, lesson two, homework. So uh, please go watch the problem set video if you have not watched that yet or if you're not quite sure what you're doing. And also try to do the math before you watch this video. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna give you all the answers, uh, but you should listen in and try to understand why these are the answers. Check your work and see what you did wrong. Uh, as always, the objective is at the bottom of the page. It's very short. Interpret a fraction as division. So basically, we're trying to understand what does a fraction mean? How can it look? This is not a fraction, so how can it be a fraction? So we're going to draw a picture to show the division. So you got to draw a picture, and then you also have to show your answer as a fraction. So a very quick assignment um, if you know what you're doing. And if you don't, then you kind of have to fight your way through, but hopefully by the end you'll get it. So um, we're going to draw a picture with a model. Now one can be shown in an infinite number of ways. And so what we're trying to do here is to recognize that if this is the whole, this is the dividend, and this is the divisor, in a fraction, this is the whole or the dividend, and this is the divisor, one divided by four. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like one box or one thing that's divided into four parts. So if you have, like we did in the problem set, you end up with one that equals four-fourths, and it's being divided by four. And so four divided by four is one, and four divided by one is four. So I just do not love some of these lessons. They're so redundant. It's like, why, why would I do this ever? And honestly, you never will. It's just, it's just understanding what this is about. So it's one thing divided into four pieces or one divided by four, and then you would end up with one fourth. One divided by four is one fourth. And so here is your work and here's your picture and express your answer as a fraction. There's your answer. Okay, I know, just, I don't wanna disparage the program so I will stop speaking. Okay, so now for number two, again, three divided by five. Three divided by five. This you can see, and this you will see, but you will rarely see uh, a picture. Now this time, instead of having one thing, you have to have three items. So you wanna just draw your three items and guess how many pieces you're gonna divide them into. That's right, five. Three divided by five is three fifths. Why? Well, you gotta draw the picture to see why. One, two, three, four, five. So you have three holes. Now, what would three be in fifths? So if I said if this is one fifth, it's one, two, three, four, five. So it's five fifths three times. So how many fifths are there? Well, there are 15 fifths. And so if I was gonna divide that by five, five is a whole number, so it would be five over one. So then you can solve 15 divided by five and get the three, and five divided by one and get five. So you've got your fraction answer, but what does this end up looking like? So you're taking your three-fifths, three-fifths, So three divided by five makes your three fifths. Now you could do that over and over. You can have different uh, colors. You can have one, two, three, then one, two, three. There's your next set. One, two, three, there's your next set. One, two, three, there's your next set. One, two, three, there's your next set. But it all just keeps calculating back to the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, five sets. And you end up with the three fifths. Most important thing in this lesson, honestly, please know that one divided by four is equal to one fourth. Three divided by five is equal to three fifths. Seven divided by four, now we have our improper fraction, seven fourths. So that's gonna be, instead of a fractional piece, we're gonna have more than one. So now I do have seven whole items. 
So one, two, yep, make seven boxes. Three, four, five, six, seven. Make your seven boxes. They don't have to be perfect. How many pieces should you divide each one into? It should be into fourths. So yes, it takes a little effort, but just do it. There you go. And then the other connection between these is how do you get this number? How do you get this number? And so you're looking at these two numbers together. In, in lesson three, hint, hint, where we're going is you'll be multiplying these. Why would I multiply them? Well, it's just because you're making this many pieces out of this many. So of course I'm gonna get 15 if I put fifths over three things. So of course I'm gonna end up with 28 pieces. So it's understanding the relationship between the numerator and the denominator is a large part of this too. So if it's seven things divided into fourths, then you would have how many of these pieces, I have 28 of them, and they're fourths, I have all 28 fourths being divided by four. So what's four in a fraction? It's four over one. And then 28 divided by four is seven, which is what we add, and four divided by one is four. So it's just, ah, uh, redundant. There's that great word, I love it. Okay, so seven fourths would then be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so then that's kind of like, hey, look, that's what the answer looks like. And if you were gonna turn this into a mixed number, of course, because four goes into seven one whole time and there are three left over, then seven fourths is equal to one and three fourths and here is one whole and here is your three fourths. So I, you know, I'm sorry, but math people, why? Why, why did they do this? I do not know. Okay, so using a picture, Show how six people could share four sandwiches. Here's a relevant question. I'm all about the food. Show how six people could share four sandwiches. So make four sandwiches, not literally, just draw four sandwiches on your paper, and then write an equation and solve. So we have six people who are dividing the four. First number is four. Second number is six. It has to be that way because you only have four sandwiches. This is the whole, that's all you have, so the four has to come first. Now, how could they share these four sandwiches? Well, you have a couple different ways, but you, could, you can take each of the sandwiches and divide them into six pieces so that each person could then have a fraction, divide them into halves and then three on each side. Oh my goodness, this is skinny. There we go. Now we have sixths. How many sixths do you think there are? Well, remember, we're gonna end up multiplying those because if I lay six over four, then I'm gonna have 24. And of course, I'm dividing by six so I would end up with four pieces as my whole. So four divided by six, oops, sorry. I'm gonna write the real answer, four divided by six, which is then down here. Take the 24 sixths and divide by six, which is your divisor. So remember the goal of this is to take this division expression, make a fraction, and then recognize how many pieces there are, what are the fractional unit? Well, it's six. And then I'm dividing this divisor the by six. That means everybody has to share only four things. So they're gonna have less than one as, their, as the whole, as what they get for their portion. So one, two, three, four. Sixths is the answer. Um, you can also, sometimes kids will do this, and they'll say, <clears throat> instead of having four sixths of one sandwich, you could do one here, um, one here, <laughs> one here, and then they can kind of share 
and you can kind of work it out so that everybody, sorry, and I should change this, so that let's say this is uh, turkey and cheese, and then you can go pastrami and rye, um, avocado and chicken. And so everybody can have like one sixth of each sandwich, and then this piece would go here, and the second one would go here. So that if you have all these different types of sandwiches, it gets to be a pretty hairy looking diagram. But if you can follow it, then each person would get a little nibble of each type of sandwich. Or you can just say, I'm just gonna cut off four sixths of a sandwich and that's what each person would get in total. And you can do it this way with adding your uh, one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth for each person, but still, they're only gonna get four sixths. Okay, all right, I know it's about as clear as mud. Right, not a fun one. Okay, anyway, this back page is very, very easy and fast, hang in there. Okay, this is your opportunity to shine. Which number goes on top and which goes on the bottom? That's all you have to do, here, here, here. Two divided by seven, two divided by seven. We're filling in the blanks to make them true. 39 divided by five. 39 divided by 5, 13 divided by 3. So this has to be in that order. Now take the fraction and lay it out into the division sentence or the division expression. So 9 divided by 5 is 9 divided by 5. Got to know which one comes first and which one goes on top. That's all this is, 19 divided by 28. And for this last one, a super challenge. Just kidding, it's not that hard. You're gonna take this and we have to make our mixed number into an improper fraction in order to have the two parts. So do you remember how to do that? What does one equal? You can use the denominator to create one. And then you can add the leftovers and get a total of 8 fifths. Another way to do it, one and 3 fifths, remember, multiply your denominator how many times you have to do it, five times one is five, add the leftovers. So you have a couple different ways to do it, eight divided by five. We're all done, click subscribe, come back again, I'll try to help you some more. Uh, see you on the next video, bye for now.